Well, my primary concern is adequate, sustainable, protected funding. Uh, if we, local government and the sheriffs in California, are going to assume responsibility for state prison inmates, uh, then we have to have that funding there in order to provide that programming. Now, in some cases, incarceration locally is going to be necessary. For inmates, for criminal offenders sentenced under Assembly Bill 109, they're going to serve their time locally. But we have a local jail bed capacity problem for a variety of reasons. We lost 192 beds to, the, to a fire at the Honor Farm. Uh, we've shut beds down for budget in order to submit a balanced budget. And remember, I've cut 25% of my resources funding and staffing in order to submit a balanced budget locally. And the county is still looking at a, probably a $16 million deficit this next fiscal year. So the economy has not recovered, and we've seen unprecedented declines in revenue. But my primary concern is that I'm hiring people back using one, what I believe is one-time funding under, under AB 109 and corrections realignment. And if the state legislature doesn't fund that in the future, if they don't f continue to refund that program every year, then I risk having to lay those people off. My hope is that the governor will maintain his commitment uh, to continuing to fund these programs. And remember for your viewers, we're investing money in community-based programming, not just incarceration. We have terrific partnerships under what was developed or put together as the CCP, the Community Corrections Partnership. That partnership includes probation, the courts, the district attorney's office, mental health, and many, many other local community providers that focus on community-based programming rehabilitative, educational, vocational opportunities. Because really, we want to break people out of the cycle of addiction and violence. Okay, we, we want to provide opportunities for people to get off of methamphetamine and not to commit any more crimes and give them the skills they need to find a job and become good productive citizens because incarceration is expensive. Exactly. But there still are those people who need to be incarcerated who quite frankly deserve to be incarcerated and, and kept away from the rest of us because they've had so many other opportunities but they're repeat criminal offenders. Uh, our, our largest challenge right now, our biggest challenge in public safety is property crimes. Theft, burglary, metal theft, crime in the agricultural community, all being driven by addiction to methamphetamine. State prison inmates have a completely different set of rights that have been afforded them through you know, multiple lawsuits and, and court uh, decisions that is completely different than a local county inmate who probably has never been to state prison and we're dealing with them locally. My concern is, again, goes back to jail bed capacity. I just don't have the capacity to house state prison inmates. Now, hopefully I will in the future. Um, we are partnering with the state in pursuing funding under AB 900 Phase 2, which in in essence, is the state helping us fund local jail bed construction and facilities. We are going to replace the 192 beds we lost to the fire here on the Hackett Road campus. But those type of projects, expanding the public safety center that you see behind you, or rebuilding those beds out by the other minimum unit, that's two, three, four years off. In the meantime, full, full implementation of AB 109 is expected to be complete in three years. I just don't have the capacity. So what's happening is, as I'm taking these people in, I'm forced to release other low-level offenders, who, by the way, are repeat criminal offenders, and putting them into alternative work programs, which is a benefit to the community. Uh, we send inmate work crews out to do landscape maintenance, beautification projects, graffiti abatement, picking up illegally dumped trash throughout the county. So there are things that, that we can do uh, with work crews but it's very limited because of the classification in, uh, issues. We're dealing with a more serious, more violent inmate in custody on top of all the mental health issues right now, which are a challenge. So this is a difficult process, but it's one that we've said we will take on and we will make it work in partnership with the community, but it has to have adequate, sustainable, protected funding. Without that critical element, this whole thing falls apart. They've been through the local criminal justice system six or seven times before they see a day in state prison. So our hope is that we'll be able to leverage our community partnerships and, uh, and the uh, you know, corrections 
the Community Corrections Partnership and that we'll be able to provide services that will help us get these criminal offenders out of the criminal justice system. That's our goal. It's going to be a, a, a challenge, especially given our current economic uh, climate. If the state legislature decides that they don't want to continue to fund this, the governor is um, attempting to put together a ballot initiative in November of 2012 that would ask the people of California to ensure that this funding uh, for this shift of state prison inmates to local government is adequate, sustainable, and protected. I guess my hope is that the people of California will support public safety. I'm not sure they're going to support uh, any more tax increases, but it's, we'll have to see exactly what the state legislature and the governor decides to do. We thought about all these things in our partnership with the state, but as one of 58 sheriffs in California, we agreed in concept to partner with the state of California because of the challenges of Coleman Plata, which is the lawsuit that was filed um, alleging that prison overcrowding contributes to inadequate health care. That's also the case where the United States Supreme Court ruled in favor of the plaintiffs and supported the lower court's decision to implement a prisoner release order. In other words, the court agreed state prison overcrowding is a problem and contributes to inadequate health care. The sheriffs were pragmatic and collaborative in their approach and stepped up and told the governor, we'll help you get through this crisis, but here are the things we need. We didn't get those things that we asked for or negotiated for when the legislation was introduced to the state, state Senate and ultimately signed by the governor. So now what we're doing is racing to put on a ballot initiative to try to protect this funding. Meanwhile, I'm accountable and responsible to the people of Stanislaus County. They voted me to help protect them. The state's responsibility of state prison inmates is not my responsibility unless the state is willing to be a partner and fund this program.